training. Along with you, Dr. Shakti Gupta is also there, and I think Dr. Sunil Kant is also likely to join. I congratulate them also because your new edition of the book is expected very shortly. Sir, I will not take much of time because I have not been given time to speak on this occasion. But uh, I would like to, you know, share with you, uh, you know, my excitement on uh, what has been done in the AHA building recently. We have uh, renovated the AHA house, which is your house. And I will only take two, three minutes to show you this AHA house, what it was earlier looking and what the work is going on and what is what it is looking now. Sir, earlier the look was like this, you know, like two months back. It has gone... In uh, the sir, uh, your PPT is not moving. Just to minimize, sir. Okay, just one minute. One minute, minimize, sir. Uh, can you uh, now is it moving? Yeah. Yes, sir. Earlier it was looking like this. Now, uh, you know, uh, then we planned, uh, we took over as a, a new team. We planned that we will have, you know, uh, a new structure like this, which should look like this. And we started working on this for the last five months. We were working on it. Now it has uh, started taking the shape. The you know entire building was in very bad shape. This is the top of the roof, which was leaking from every side. Now it has been tiled, and it is under the uh, process going on. These are the you know toilets which were in very bad shape. Entire thing it was leaking from everywhere, and now it has uh, you know been repaired. All the toilets uh, in the EHA house have been repaired. And all looking like this. We didn't have water storage facility, so we have made the water storage facility also. Uh, then, sir, the walls were like this. Uh, you can see the other side. Now we have uh, converted into granite. This is the front front. You must be, many of you uh, may not may not have recently uh, visited uh, the EHA house. The EHA house. The front was also in very bad shape. This is now. Uh, it is coming up well now. Uh, this is the front, uh, the entire gate, grills, etc. All things have been changed. You know the facilities at AHA. We have a lot many facilities, sir. Uh, we have the uh, capacity 125 capacity classes in our conference hall, uh, where unfortunately we are not able to conduct the classes at the moment. Otherwise, but this is our uh, uh, seminar rooms. We have similar, you not. Know, that big, but we have two more. This is a library, this is lab, computer lab. So we have a lot many facilities and uh, uh, we are upgrading the facilities. This I wanted to share with you. Uh, and I will, I, I, I assure you that in the next two months, we will be giving you an entirely new AHA house and uh, we, will, we will definitely, if the corona is not there and uh, the condition allows, we will call each one of the members who are especially at Delhi for uh, uh, inaugurating this uh, building again. Inaugurating is not a right word. We will have a uh, party to celebrate its, uh, the new building uh, of AHA. So I will not take much of the time. I will straightway ask Dr. Ashish to go ahead because Dr. Uh, Dr. Chandrasekhar has you know, uh, not to tell us, not to say. Thank you very much, and uh, I welcome you all once again, and uh, wish good luck for you know, <clears throat> the coming programs which will be conducted every Saturday. And before I close, I must compliment my team, uh, especially Dr. Ballard, Dr. Dinkta, and others who are involved in the renovation of this uh, AHA house. Thank you very much, Dr. President. Thank you, President, sir, for uh, updating us on the AHA building. Now I take on to the today's program. Today's program, uh, we have a very renowned uh, speaker, rather than, you know, expert in the country uh, on hospital architect, uh, architecture, Professor Dr. R. Chandra Shekhar. Uh, he is a renowned figure. Um, uh, he uh, has been the former chief architect of Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Government of India. He is presently the chairman, IGBC Green Healthcare Rating. He is consultant World Bank, consultant IU. IH, visiting professor, London South Bank University, UK, 
and uh, today the, he is going to talk about on the convergence of medical architecture, technology, infection control, and engineering in healthcare. Over to you, sir. Thank you, and uh, season's greetings to all our senior members and my colleagues. I'll just uh, share my PPT. Is it visible? Yes, sir. It is visible? Yes, yes sir. sir. It's visible, sir. Okay. So good evening to everyone. And uh, today the topic was uh, why we chose this was number one is whenever we build a hospital or any infrastructure related to healthcare, there are two shortages always we spell out. One is shortage of space and shortage of manpower. And what is all we have learned over a period of time is the only thing which can bridge the gap is the technology. And that's why I thought how the technology can help be helpful. And I'll demonstrate some of the parameter. But the thing is, this I have been talking for almost more than a decade. But Corona has brought us in real sense that without this, you will not be able to survive. So now, by force or by whether you willing or non-willing, everyone has adopted this. So today, first is my presentation summary will be like possible use of technology in addressing the issue. Because of the technology, my space constraint can be taken care. Lesser I make a space, construct a space and utilize optimally, that will help me in reduction in cost. Every now and then when you are talking about, you talk about the reduction of the cost because hospital infrastructure is becoming very expensive. Then I will also talk about use of technology in medical education. Recently, I'm handling number of medical colleges in various state and being an advisor with them. And uh, I had seen that the medical education where you need a good faculty because you can keep on building aims, you can keep on building medical, you know, colleges, but the faculty is in a short supply. And because of that, the technology again can bridge that gap. So I'll demonstrate some of the skills where a prominent or eminent professor can even, uh, you know, teach a remote uh, area of the colleges, etc. Then I'll briefly tell you how medical architecture is different from the regular architecture where we have to think of comprehensive approach. That is infrastructure, equipment, and manpower all has to be thought together. Otherwise, the functioning of the hospital will not be uh, complete. And also, sustenance and maintenance will be the other part. Then, some of the technology and construction industry Today, nowadays, everything is need to be constructed in speedy way. So how that will also a pre-engineered structure and what kind of addition alteration in a pre prep positioning will be also, I'll discuss that. And most importantly, I'll little elaborately discuss on indoor air quality because a lot of people have their own apprehensions and problems. And after Corona, a lot of people have been Guided, misguided, sometimes we have our great, uh, you know, doctor WhatsApp, who, or engineer WhatsApp, or architect WhatsApp, who gives you all kind of information, and people get, you know, upset on that. So these will be the main thing. If time permits, I'll touch upon a little about the green and also the safety of the hospital. So to start with, the impact of emerging technology on the future of hospital. Now the pharmaceuticals will replace some procedure and will decrease the need of admission to hospital and newer vaccine will treat as well as prevent disease. Even if you remember, recent increase in the budget of 137%, where stress is given on wellness center. I being a you know uh, consultant to Indo-UK Institute of Health, where we are setting up 11 medicities and 89 uh, you know, uh, small uh, hub and spoke model where the basic centers will be there. The people will be taken care within the district and they need not go to the major hospital unless otherwise it is 
you know, really need, required an admission or that specialized treatment. Similar kind of a thing is going to happen and that is why government is also giving a lot of importance on wellness. And then minimally invasive surgery will reduce hospital stay and promotes outpatient operation. Robotic surgery, you know, already it is in process. And sensors will change central laboratories and intensive care units of today. The digitized images will be accessible to all clinicians and xenotransplantation from transgenic pig is ever more likely. And economics and superior outcome will favor specialty hospital. And we have learned a lot of things during COVID. So we say delivering healthcare without using information technologies like driving a car without a dashboard and steering. And neither can you make out what's happening, nor can you maneuver the vehicle to avoid mishap. This is one of our health expert, R.P. Gupta's statement. I have seen the biggest challenge which we face is crowd management. Now you can see our crowds are like this in OPD. 8,000, 10,000 or 12,000 people per day footfall. Then everyone thought of why don't we do computerization? And in the AIMS we started first. What happened? First we said, let us go do it like a, you know, airline and other places, railway. People will pick up the token and then they will get in. You could see there were three, four thousand people fighting in the counter of token itself. And the idea was, once that token is given, they all will be waiting and their number comes. You have to understand as many number of counter, because when you calculate within the limited time, one counter, how many patients it can cater, accordingly how many counters needed, how many manpower needed, then we realized this system will not work. So we went one step ahead. We went for a call center. You can book your appointment and everything is done 24 by 7 and the uh, you know booking has been done. Now it has been almost become a compulsory in most of our government hospital. There we also did one more experiment in our uh, trauma center. And recently during our uh, COVID time, people have started using robo in your, uh, you know, uh, because we wanted to be touch free kind of a thing. And a lot of private hospital has started with this scheme also. In uh, JP Trauma Center, what we did, they issued a, uh, you know, a tab to every doctor. The moment patient comes, they used to take a picture. And doctors were very, you know, uh, reluctant in typing and they were con having a comfort level while writing. So in the tab, they were in a position to write. And the beauty is, we have also seen that sometimes the bad handwriting may also give a problem in case of medication error. So we have given them the drop menu so that the medicines will be into the drop menu. And finally, you can take out a printout and give it to them. There was one more problem we used to face that when a repeat patient comes after two, three months, he always will come and say, Sir, I lost my OPD slip. Parchi ho gayi. So with the search engine, you will be in a position to handle this. The latest, you know, gadgets, because everybody is used to smartphone. So we started using these kind of a gadgets, self-service hospital guide, then medical computer card. This mobile point of care, mobile workstation for electronic patient record and clinical viewing. When I introduced this long ago, and when we went to this, first time we introduced this in Tata Memorial, when I wanted to do it in the Sadarjan, they were very happy. But at that time they said, sir, we don't have a Wi-Fi facility. So today the Wi-Fi has become a compulsion and these are the gadgets which works on the good Wi-Fi system. And we have also worked out a uh, you know, kind of a system in which we have to see that even at the older hospital where thick walls are there, still your Wi-Fi should work out very well. Then you have a mobile clinical assistant and bedside infotainment. We have put that information and entertainment together. And with this, uh, you know, everyone using the smart uh, thing in every gadget. So this becomes helpful in reducing the, uh, you know, manpower with the optimum utilization. Now this nursing card. 
Nurse spent 90% working time traveling between nurse station and patient uh, ward. And a highly integrated computerized nursing card to optimize patient care, process, and enable mobile point of care. So this becomes minimal nurse and maximum output we can get it. Then this is the latest thing which I have noticed. There is something called Mr. Ware. It is a new dimensional to e-hospital. This device is fully wireless and able to transmit data and to be recharged wirelessly. The device also can be worn around the uh, you know, clock and uh, is shower resistant. You can take bath, nothing will happen. And this system automates follow-up with the patient who have been released from the hospital and provides digital check-ins, guidance, reminders, clinical questionnaire, and educational material intends to make sure patient continues to improve and alert provider if there are they are in trouble. So when you see the sensor can diagnose and monitor an entire list of medical condition and this easy wearable device helps in self-monitoring and by doctors and caretaker also who are not with the person. So it provides real-time monitoring of the patient 24 hours a day. Offline storage are in halter mode and even triggered alerts are all available in the medical version. Stress mode is also available for high intensity athletic activity. Those who are in the marathon runner, they can also wear it and in the case of any collapse, they can be detected. It can be applied in a chronic disease management and post-operative recovery for patient as well as in the health and fitness management. I'll just play a small video which will demonstrate this, that this lady who has been just being discharged from whatever surgery she has undergone and she has been briefed for how she can watch her current heart rate and her parameters in her own mobile. And after discharge, she has been explained. And one day when she is feeling that stress and she sees her this thing, immediately this transmits to the concerned consultant and who can immediately advise them or take a corrective action. So this is how this latest uh, kind of a gadget helps in keeping everyone, you know, and similarly the smart PMR, the physical medicine rehab. You can see a treadmill with robotic arms helps to move a stroke and paralysis victim's leg, allowing them to feel the pattern of walking which rebuilds muscle faster and speedy, uh, speeds the recovery. Otherwise, we have to put two people to make them understand. So this is how robots work. Then virtual reality technology has taken a good, you know, they uh, bring realistic 3D digital representation, which can help in faster recovery of patient in hospital. It helps them to release anxiety and stress. And... Uh, dialysis unit with lesser hassle of wires, etc. And also the lab fixtures of the latest order where you have a, you know, uh, uh, pneumatic tube system with all these gadgets available. This is I'm uh, uh, demonstrating during the disaster when you don't have a water available, how you can utilize this. This care bag is a very good absorbent bag and where there is a, no water supply, you can get into use these kind of a thing for emergency. This is a toilet bowl liner, which is where there is no water connection. You can put this, place the bag over the toilet bowl. Very important is this pad. Place this absorbent pad at the bottom of the bag. This super absorbent pad does convert. One is it takes away the order and also converts everything into a gel within seconds. And this medical grade bag safely contains body fluid, microorganism and order. Now you can just tightly for the disposal, there is a system and you can very coolly dispose it off. This is how these kind of a gadgets are also helpful for this, which prevents soiling order and the spread of microorganism. So this is some of the techniques where there are disaster and there is a problem we can do and 
total containment optimized infection control and digital hospital infrastructure in a digital hospital system and people can communicate with each other to make the hospital more responsive agile and flexible up to date information improves responsiveness and eases the information bottleneck that block hospital throughput and two way communication between nurse and patient reduces unnecessary walking by nurses giving them more time to focus on patient care it is better to standardize the flexibility standardization reduces complexity complexity which is important when flexibility is needed standardization is a key strategy in the human factor design as a means to reduce the risk of error and improve quality health facility guidelines you all are aware that it is available in the our uh, rafa uh, platform that is website www.rfhha.org those who are not aware can note down this website you can have a health facility briefing and all the room data sheets etc is available boundaryless institution more common hospital function will move closer to patient and only a few specialized function will be concentrated at other place so telemedicine capabilities will be fully utilized now you have those telemedicine kiosks each of the health kiosks have a high definition video conferencing system that allows doctor to discuss symptoms and patient diagnose the condition and prescribe medication the kiosks are also containing several digital medical devices i have tried this in the various part of the uttarkashi i have connected them with the aims rishikesh and you can imagine in the hills the travel is very more complicated and which has got reduced because of the telemedicine facility and the very good network which has been improved earlier the network used to be the biggest challenge the medical education how you can give distant education i'll just demonstrate one small video in which you can see an orthopedic uh, specialty class where this particular uh, case is being discussed and which can be transmitted to various classes or uh, different colleges here they are trying to discuss and focus the area of problem and this problem area in this tab is uh, loaded with all the data it is remove the uh, uh, surrounding data and focuses only to the described area you can always load the ct x ray and the other related digital uh, this thing available which is all loaded for a comparison you can take a virtual knife and this virtual knife will cut across and give you much more in detail so these kind of gadgetry is are not possible everyone to have it but a main medical institution can do and the transmission and now telemedicine and this network has become very common so this becomes very useful in the medical education a medical architecture i already explained to you medical architecture is synergizing the requirement of various stakeholder i always give one example sometime when you say ask for you know uh, where the sluice room should be there where the bed pans are clean so if you ask a nurse it will she will say it should be near the duty station if you ask a public health engineer he will look for a toilet or a shaft because he is concerned with disposal if you ask a hospital administrator he will say minimum travel distance before because when the patient is needing it he should not defecate in the bed and before that he should get an access medical architect synergizes all the stakeholders and try to achieve this thing so they can make to design a functional cost effective patient centric and staff centric healthcare infrastructure with optimum utilization of available space hospital projects are all two types one is a brownfield project which you know that the remodeling of a existing uh, hospital and greenfield is the new upcoming aims and new super speciality hospital so generally greenfield project we have all the description but in the brownfield you have to improve that improvement and upgradation is the focus in terms of infrastructure medical equipment and human resources and also the bulk services means all the electric substation services etc need to be upgraded to suit to the upgraded version hospital location is very important whenever you choose a site your first and foremost thing is you have to check whether how are the geological phenomena is it a earthquake prone area is it a volcanic eruption or landslide area or tsunami 
tsunami prone or hurricane or the flooding. I'll give you one example. This is the Apollo Dhaka. You could see this area had a flooding problem. So the plinth level of the hospital was fixed up in such a way. This is how it looks after finishing. So this becomes a very important while doing the site planning. Similarly, master planning strategies are very important. Every design should have a planned zone. Zoning is very important for future growth. This can be appear as a dotted line on the site plan or maybe developed as a constructed but unoccupied shelf space or as a structural capacity to allow for future vertical addition to a building. Always it is preferred that you do the construction, add modular, but don't go vertical upgradation. Otherwise, you keep the frame ready and do the finishing at later date. Because when a functional hospital doing a uh, adding a floors becomes a more problematic. Now, this is a live example of our site at Jodhpur. This Jodhpur Ames site where we had institutional and residential zoning. In that institutional, you have a hospital, you have an academic that is medical college and the services that is electric substation, pump room, etc. And the buffer, green buffer between the residential, uh, institutional and residential. I give you an example of a detailed master plan of Bhopal Ames, where you could see the darker portion are the one which we have constructed, and these are the future expansion. Whether in this, everywhere you will find the future extension accordingly. Now here the zoning is, you have a hospital zone, you have a trauma center, you have a services, Ayush and Herbal Garden becomes a green buffer between the medical college and the hospital, and you have a nursing college, auditorium, future dental college, and your hostel facility. And similarly, you can work out a site circulation very clearly that your emergency movement, your just general public entry, IPD entry, because it works almost in the evening hours also, and your main vehicle approach and your services, the service entry is separate, which is going to cater to the service zone only. And the student movement and the student movement to the college or to the hospital. These need to be worked out very, very carefully. This is what is more important whenever you are doing and uh, doing recently. And now uh, I congratulate Dr. Shakti Gupta, who is recently appointed as a executive director for the upcoming AIMS in Jammu. And I know that right from the day one, he has been insisting on this and educating all their students and always used to uh, send number of people to understand this master planning business. Now the main architecture principle fundamental to planning modern hospitals and other related build form have been functional and rational. In an era of specialization, specialty healthcare facilities in a hospital are merely a referral facility. I was show you an example. This was the NIMS Hyderabad, that is Nizam Institute of Medical Science, where we try to work out how you can have a same floor where you have an OPD, the same specialty ward, and their teaching. Like if you see a one floor plate, the teaching de department of neurology and neurosurgery, neurology, OPD, and neurosurgery, OPD is on the left hand side, and the ward of neurology and neurosurgery is on the right side. This helps in travel distance, reducing the travel distance of the clinician. Now, one common floor can be for operation theaters and ICU and SDU. This is how we worked out on uh, the various microzoning. And while doing the stack diagram, you can do the connectivity at a sterile level and also at the ward level. And each stack has a separate facility like cardiology, cardiac surgery, neurology, neurosurgery, urology, nephrology. You know, each floor has its own this thing. So there is no need of crowding around and making a massive, uh, you know, huge OPD where people are rushing around here and there because it is a referral facility. Now, loose fit design. The concept of loose fit is to design with larger spaces that can be used for more than a minimum function originally proposed and to arrange them to department or grouping that allows for future. Flexibility. Spaces can be designed to adapt to multiple uses. 
An example is a patient room that can be adapted for purpose of simple procedure such as line insertion. The different function can be accommodated by simply adapting the space because it has a plan to serve a range of facility and convertible flexibility. Low effort, time and cost you should be able to convert. That means a patient room with plumbing, gases, electrical system in the wall for future conversion in a critical care. And the day spaces should be flexible. It can be used for visitor, it can be for relaxation, can be used also as a refuge area in case of disaster to evacuate the patient. As you can see, this area, which is also it can be used as a solarium, solarium where we generally you, uh, dry our uh, you know mattresses when if it is soiled, as the linen goes to the laundry, but these are the terraces where it can also be a relief area for the patient for evacuation. Now, utility is also in order to offer flexibility in design, you, you have to have the capability of expansion and upgradation facility all throughout, which reduces the cost of the future project. And plug and play infrastructure, this is horizontal and vertical circulation keeping the same. How you can do the extra, uh, you know, plugging in of the pre-engineered stuff. Like this pre-engineered structure, you can see, you can have a courtyard infill model, you can have a wrap around, you can add, you know, few blocks, or you can, on gantries, or over a roof, you can build. This is the way in the existing hospital, you can utilize the pre-engineered solution. This is called plug and play. Now, BIM. Building information modeling has become a very important tool. This expands benefit to hospital design and operation, improves better design coordination between different disciplines and communicate better in the field, and systematically assembles structured information about the health facility for project manager, from planning to commissioning and maintenance, and saves time in project implementation and avoid errors. Now I'm going to touch upon the very important topic, which is indoor air quality, IAQ. We have basically particulate, microbial, and gases. Particulate means your dust, dander, pollen, organic clumps, usually handled by the air filtration. And filter must be maintained to be effective. Microbial is bacteria, viruses, molds, spores, etc. And the gases means volatile organic compound, orders, orders even caused by pet orders or perfumes or food orders, etc. Now, Air quality issue we face every day. Close human contact and aerial spread of pathogen all lead to degraded air quality. We have learned a lot of lessons during COVID. And air quality is greatly affected by the presence of dust and the bacterial load that it carries. And the average person shed around 300 million skin flakes every day, each of which contains up to 100 microorganisms. And these travels throughout our environment on air current before settling on a surface such as tables, floor, door frame. So as soon as we clean room, we are again recontaminating it. So technological method to reduce risk of airborne transmission. We always used to use three methods. Now I'm going to tell you the fourth method which I always used to insist on, which was never given importance. COVID has made it mandatory. The first one is we use it pressurization, where everybody is aware about this negative pressure in isolation on the positive pressure in OTs, etc. Then dilution means more number of high ventilation rate, that is air changes per hour, control particle by removal through ventilation. Third was filtration, using a pre-filter, microwave filter, HEPA filter, etc. The fourth one, which was very important, was purification. We always used to say filter can trap the pathogen and there will be a colony of pathogen, but you will never kill them. So destroying infectious agent in air through exposure of ultraviolet radiation or PHI is photohydroionization or HEPA MD. HEPA MD is high efficiency particulate resistance. MD is microbial destruction. So when you see in the AHU, you can only add one UVGI lamp which takes care of this destruction part or the purification part. Photohydroionization is a hydrogen-based oxidizers are created by exposing activated oxygen molecules to a hydrated catalyst 
containing four unique metal and 300 nm uv light that is photon energy these friendly oxidizers are hydroperoxide hydroxide superoxide ions and ozonide ion if you see the uh, phi looks like this which is generally put up in the air handling unit now when you see the air friendly oxidizers are blown into this conditioned space microbes and gases are destroyed on contact and oxidize break down into oxygen and water vapor so here you can see how this mold and spores in a room and when the air is blown through this phi it not only clears all this molds and spores into the room but when it goes back into the ahu whatever is stuck in the filter is also get cleared so this is how you could find then there is a air plasma purification which has recently become more popular after the uh, you know uh, covid this is uses a specific voltage to convert electrons into the atoms of air into charged ion and then activated oxygen ion cluster together to neutralize the pollutant to make them harmless so this disinfection integration is done with the ahu now that means an integrated system of components engineered for indoor air quality air purification energy saving and bio defense the major component of this system is ultraviolet germicidal irradiation filtration and reflecting material and monitoring hardware so this is a flexible and can be installed in any new or existing hvac hepa md high efficiency particulate resistance microbial destruction in this you have a four level the first level is exposition to a non thermal plasma then captured by electrical media then molecular filtration then molecular trapping they are making sure that in all way the first level microbial destruction happens biological decontamination and high efficiency particulate arrestance does that catalytic conversion happens and molecular trapping that means you are going to get 100% pure, pure this thing so these are available in mobile air decontamination unit ceiling air de decontamination unit and this protective units are generally when you want to isolate a patient you have this cupboard kind of a thing and even the burn patient etc within the same area you can give the level of uh, you know uh, quality of air you need and ceiling diffuser system is generally involved in do your central air condition now what has happened in the after covid when your treatment of exhaust air also become a very important and it is preferably done by hepa filtration this hepa filter shall be minimum of s13 filter class or equivalent so you could see that the air before it is thrown out is through hepa filter so that the environment doesn't get a problem when the air is throw it thrown out out of a covid hospital and uegi for exhaust air and uvc 254 nm wavelength irradiation with appropriate exposure time can be used to kill viruses in exhaust air recently i am working on railway air conditioning system because that has become a challenge with a limited space and economically how we are have to handle this now one more thing is this bio oxygen system where first level is a pre filtration second is a high filtration action and bio oxygen system which microbicide and bacteriostatic action this is how the various filtration systems are there even center for disease control prevention funded randomized clinical trial concluded that combination of manual cleaning and measured dose of uv light result in a 30% reduction of infection for patient who stay in rooms previously occupied by infected patient now lot of people after covid started asking how to use air conditioner then we came up with a all air con system which is a central air cleaner is suitable for all types of hvac system such as ahu fan coil unit ductable tfa hrv cassette split ac now just for experiment even i have put in the similar thing uh, in my existing uh, uh, you know air conditioning split ac where i have inducted the uv light and also put in a filtration at the upper portion where the return air is thrown out so you can see this we have found a result that whether it is sars covid or microorganism particles or gases 
a good rate kill rate has been uh, tested and found out and this is how you will find it has an electromagnetic current which will kill and this becomes useful for a larger uh, area where centralized air condition are there so finally the filtered air particles filter up to 0.1 micron size this is how this works and this has a three stages first is a pre filter that is graded ldpp long lasting filter ft1 pm10 stage 2 is a polarization which is what is more important this electron charge polarization needles a ft1 micro particles and makes them thicker then they get stuck and they are uh, you know uh, finished stage 3 is agglomeration so dual polarity no arcing trap and kill germs ft1 pm 2.5 up to 0.0 point neutron so another thing which is very important is when you are decontaminating your uh, operation theater or the even the wards after the discharge or the process is over so the robots that are used for contagion and virus control that are able to generate high concentration ultraviolet rays that destroy contagious disease provides total room disinfection you can see a lot of videos and all even in your linkedin and social media striking solution these are the smaller one when you can try and do it for the uh, room to uh, smaller room and wards and the micro solution you have you know uh, to sanitize the your other uh, even including wheelchair and this becomes very common nowadays after covid you can use upper uvgi earlier we used to use it only for the tv so this makes a total uv the circle in your uh, you know upper portion and it kills and remember uv you cannot get direct exposure therefore the design has to be very very careful so that you are protected from your skin and i will get uh, affected in case of direct exposure and this is a portable isolation which we had uh, found out during the uh, you know ebola time which is also isolation chamber which you can see that if you don't have to prepare everything at least you can have a ready made isolation chamber in some of the places and that facility is also available i'll quickly demonstrate the ward design how the pressurization helps this is a typical ward layout of a private room where you will find like you enter you have a toilet and you have a room here lot of places we have found the centrally air conditioned area some people during a good time they open the window when they open the window the problem with the air conditioning becomes a big issue there are a lot of you know fungal growth in the diffuser so always better keep the corridor in positive pressure this in between barrier the lobby becomes a negative the toilet becomes more negative and the shaft becomes highest negative and this shaft can be operational or maintained by outside corridor in a multi story we don't have to worry and you don't have to get inside from the toilet area disturbing it and the room is in a positive pressure in case the patient opens the window still this negative pressure barrier it doesn't allow the airborne infection transmission from this room to the outside or outside area to this room because this negative sucks everything and it has been thrown out in the shaft so this is the typical layout now after the covid lot of people said that it becomes very difficult for us to have you know independent room i need a similar type of ward and also it should be useful for my medical colleges also so we worked out a detail layout which is more on a evidence based design where nature helps in curing the patient nowadays you find lot of ward where you don't know even what is happening outside whether it is raining or like here what you find you can have a male ward female ward you can have a neuro ward neurology and here neurosurgery you can have any kind of a speciality the way you feel like you have a open courtyard which will and every bed will have a window that means you are able to have a good cross ventilation if it is non air conditioned and if it is a air conditioned ward still you can have a good natural light if you see a uh, you know little detail you can find these two rooms have a common in between wall in fact in detail all your medical gases etc becomes a very economically in one wall it can go this way the patient can look outside and one nurse 
you we can uh, you know easily monitor them this is how it will look like when you want a privacy it is acting like a, as good as a single room and if you want a little company that also is possible so this works out a better covid ward and also we call it a evidence based design based ward so key ventilation criteria no air pressure difference between the room and adjacent corridor lower air pressure then greater air pressure in the room than the adjacent corridor and ventilation control to achieve either positive or negative pressure in the room so this is what only i'll take uh, by watch maximum 4 minutes i'll just cover up this because i am very much on to the dot and here the environment friendly green hospital use of non conventional energy waste management usage of eco friendly recycled product building management system to monitor and control barrier free environment and healing architecture and indoor environment quality excellent feature that result in environment protection water conservation harvesting energy efficiency so you could find grass pavers solar thermal and co2 sensors low volatile organic material state of the art hvac efficient lighting i will definitely love to talk more on green because green is itself is a subject which will take one hour to explain so that we will take it separately but i just thought that this is a session we should sensitize green is a mantra which is essential now so you can have a recycled water used for flushing irrigation or cooling tower and pneumatic tube system is a sustainable waste management technology it is an automated sealed system of waste collection through horizontal and vertical pipe network and the pneumatic tube system is green it reduces building wear and tear it maintains hygiene and keeps facility cleaner no exposure of waste to environment thus helps to prevent cross examination so this is how the pneumatic tube system works where you have a different uh, you know waste pipes and they get connected in the under the ground and reaches to the your waste management collection uh, you know processing center so the mandatory requirement is focus on energy conservation building code we call it ecbc 2007 and minimum igbc gold rating and three star gra rating igbc under my chairmanship has come up with a health facility rating which is one of its kind nobody has the similar one include in the entire uh, asia pacific so that you can always go for it and it is available at www.igbc.in you can download it free and get your hospital or medical institution rated for minimum gold rating so indian green building council is the site and uh, uh, griha is the another one which is green rating of integrated habitat assessment but griha has the simulation method of a normal this thing there is no separate healthcare rating here our infection control and also the evidence based design has been given important just last for infection control antimicrobial copper copper 80% of infection happens through touch surface use copper copper is antimicrobial it kills the germ itself all the touch surface whether grab bar handle or even you can use it only to the touch surface area rest of the thing can be different to make it economical you can see the toilet grab bars the taps and even the scissor knife bed rail wherever you touch those are the one where you can use copper even the stethoscope and nowadays even the mouse computer mouse these are the key things which you can take a call in japan they have made the escalator handrail also into this and just one uh, four slides on this disaster we are all concerned about disaster so engineering services has to be taken note of for the safety all these kind of a, a fall which happens during the any kind of a earthquake should be prevented for that very simple methodology that is anchor them once you anchor them you can prevent a great deal and have a disaster preparedness and drill in your system so have a proper evacuation plan blending of open spaces and built spaces fire escape staircase and route refuse area for easier evacuation in multi story structure and appropriate signages that is wayfinding 
and display of evacuation route in different parts of the building so don't make your hospital a casualty of disaster make safe health facilities everyone and the environment what patient wants a built environment that promotes connection to staff is conducive to well being is convenient and accessible is confidential and private and shows caring for family and is considerate of impairment facilitate connection to the outside world is safe and secure easy way finding that is signages and the built environment enhances patient flow overall efficiency and functional operation of the healthcare facility thank you very much for your kind attention and this is my email id anyone who wishes to get any kind of a query raised or if it is not able to possible to answer during this session may uh, you know email me and i'll be very glad to answer this thank you very much thank you professor chandrashekhar uh, now it is open for uh, question and answers and comments if any by the uh, dr sharma you are uh yeah uh, sir yes. yeah sir good evening sir and thank you very much for a wonderful session sir uh so one uh, little question you spoke about the uh, waste management with uh, pneumatic tube system so this is you are talking about the liquid waste management if you are talking about the solid waste management can we use the same pneumatic system you would need a greater girth right see i'll i'll tell you about this this pneumatic system can be used for solid liquid in, including biomedical waste only thing is you have to work out a proper waste management program for that there is a docking station you know where you load your stuff that loading stuff you have to do the collection and whatever container baggage wherever you are taking it you have to bring it there are certain a methodology and even the company provides you the kind of a, a waste you have that kind of a baggage and when you are loading that in the dock then what happens if somebody is loading on some floor the computer will not give access to that person and that computerized system will also tell you to select the current kind of a, you know what kind of a waste whether it is a domestic waste or whether it is your you know uh, uh, biomedical waste or but generally what we do as of now we have kept the biomedical waste separately because i have a feeling because if somebody uh, you know doesn't follow the uh, protocol properly it becomes a yeah. problem that That's is why we keep but it has the uh, you know capacity to handle that sure and what would be the uh, uh, approximate cost for such a system sir See, if it were to use both uh, solid and liquid waste See, two things which you have to see uh. anything which has to cost us to work out when they will see the plan that what is the kind of a network where i will go, going to process this and how long i have to take it what will be yeah. my section level those are yeah. the costs will be based on project to project and sure. right now we have tried in one of the private and some of the thing and even in some world bank project also when i am uh, trying to work on this on a okay. smaller scale because okay. you have to understand that whenever you bring sophistication and yeah. if the fellows are not trained and yeah. they mess around all yeah. you have dreamt of which you can discuss in conferences but it will be okay. fatal when in the actual site so you have to be with the training and this exactly. is also important. exactly right thank you so much yeah thank you so much sir welcome uh, any questions from any Sir, yes. uh, this pneumatic shoot for waste management. Who will be using it, sir? Is it the generator, uh, or is this housekeeping people have to again touch and fill it into the pneumatic shoot? I mean, which manpower will be? You who will see be, who the, the uh, man. The manpower who are trained to handle the waste management of collection and finally taking it to certain processing area. Their processing area has changed. that processing area is this dock and it helps in a way that this dock is connected every floor so your floor wise your extreme end say this is the area where your fire escape staircase or even the service staircase is also there and your dock station is also there so your collection staff is going to take that and load it as per the manual and as per the train okay thank you sir 
so they'll have to again touch that uh, i mean whatever doctors and nurses have disposed of has to be again see whatever has been disposed of has to be uh, you know bagged and it is to be airtight or whatever the protocols of the waste management depending on the type of the waste only thing is you are dumping that uh, you know whatever you are collected in that plastic bag or whatever that you are dumping it in that uh, uh, you know docking station where the mouth size is also fixed and accordingly you have to prepare suppose the quantity is too huge there also there is a protocol that how this has to be filled up to what level so these are all very systematic methodology it is away from the this thing but uh, helps a person one who really administers the strict administration and uh, making the discipline and slowly slowly we will understand you tell me how much uh, uh, you know protocols have been published by government that wear mask keep safe distance do you think our people are following we are seeing the second uh, spill right now the problem is our people have the habit earlier if you remember when the government of india said that have a incinerator in every hospital they dumped everything including mattresses then they realized this is not done they think that anything you put in means everything is incinerated so our problem is training as well as a discipline has to be there then things can be managed very well thank you sir prabhu tanju there is a question from shruti sharma Uh, mm -hmm. uh, can the pneumatic shoots be used in already functional hospital and can we you know put up there absolutely it can be used generally i'll tell you very easily where the people have tried to do that invariably in the extreme end people used to build a fire escape staircase in most of the building and adjoining there if they want they can make a small you know right from the ground floor to this thing a separate structure attaching that with a expansion joint so that it is not having a, any kind of a load or any this thing and it can be possible but it can be depending upon how the hospital design the shape of the design and how the parameters are but it is possible thank you sir any questions yes dr sundar yeah i uh, had a question um, uh, sir i just wanted to know your uh, you know views on uh, you know prefabricated uh, you know constructions which are generally done in most uh, you know government hospitals a few years after the hospital is commissioned maybe 3 4 5 years or so in the case of aims it started maybe about 20 25 years because of very good planning in the 1960s but you know uh, we see that uh, in in most uh, recent hospitals also within 3 or 4 years we have these requests for you know uh, some expansion somewhere or or a porta cabin now these are uh, you know uh, terrible fire hazards and we have seen in the last 3 or 4 years you know several fires in teaching hospitals multi speciality hospitals so so as an architect you know what would be your comments on these sort of prefabricated structures which are added on to the hospital you know somewhere down the line see the prefab uh, structures are available with your fire resistant rating and infection control parameter also unfortunately our selectors go for some l1 who is giving you a syntax kind of a bloody thing which you know basic uh, you know functions are shattered they think whatever security guard cabin banaya are ek icu bhi bana do are bhai there is a uh, you know i'll tell you one more thing every But, politician is an architect <laughs> i will not say only politician even bureaucracy ah yes and also the problem is our engineering people will come up with their yes, l1 tendering yes, yes. they are hand in glove more yeah, often than not let me tell you i'll show you pre uh, you know uh, design modular hospital being done in calicut the entire manufacturing unit is in krishnagiri but what happens they build the entire hospital inside their factory remove them go and reassemble them and all finished product you will get whatever you know infection free finishes you want everything is done not that you build a structure you call for somebody he say antimicrobial somebody says antibacterial he shows some false certificate and anybody can comes and spray 
So selection of a correct agency. There are agency available and so right are, material. Are there any codes, sir? Because we faced no. a peculiar problem in our uh, new RAK OPD. I hmm. remember maybe about two, two and a half years back before the pandemic, when we had gone on site rounds, we found that uh, after the third, third or fourth feet onwards, it was prefabricated, and we couldn't, uh, you know, put the, uh, you know, the manifold pipelines and the oxygen and suction outlets in the treatment rooms. As a result of which, modifications had to be done. So, so I wanted to know if there are any, uh, you know, codes or guidelines or any standards which can be put in the tender, uh, you know, document where you know we can be a little more short of, uh, you know, quality. See, there is a standard available, and there is a. Codes are also available in BIS also. Okay. See, problem is when you say drywall, they think gypsum. Are there is a six variety of gypsum. If you have a drywall, I can nail it and put a 50 kg weight also. And there is a wall which, if I nail something, it will be going our part. Similarly, whatever question you raised, I have constructed a small unit in Uttarkashi for Panchakarma unit. And you can understand the Pancha, uh, uh, Uttarkashi area being a very cold area. And Panchakarma is done when your body doesn't have any clothes. Now it is totally insulated. Totally insulated from water, even also uh, the roof and the walls. Everywhere it is insulated. And when your process is done, you are always taking it little time. Shama, you have to uh, mute yourself. So it is up to us how we are taking and designing. What happens? I'll tell you one small example. We never give any weightage to even acoustics. Mm -hmm. And the yeah. challenge came when we got a, a Gorakhpur site was adjoining an airbase where your oh. big air fly, aircraft is going to fly. Like Vasant Kunj. Yeah. Yes. And when I asked, when I took this uh, with this thing in the ministry, they said, Are you acoustic tile laga denge, acoustic partition. I said, sir, you have to understand, hospital is supposed to be in the silent zone. Absolutely. Agreed that we don't get a, such a huge 150, 200 if we, acre. You won't believe. We engaged an international consultant for acoustics. Mm -hmm. We got a separate sanction for acoustics. We got the acoustical drawing made, which is mm -hmm. externally how it is be done. Yes. I, ha I was there till such time the planning and execution was on. Now I don't know how it was supervised because it also requires equal amount of supervision. Right, People right. don't understand. And when I also tell them about the uh, disaster, hmm. disaster from non-structural member becomes a biggest issue when your false ceiling collapses. And there is a proper manual that how you have to plan. false ceiling and that is where these are certain things where a good uh, inspection or good monitoring makes a uh, approach. And that is what is happening when I am doing a lot of work for Orissa government. So everywhere they have made a team and collected experts so that it becomes well monitored and controlled. And you don't waste time. Otherwise, you make something, you break right. something and remake That's right. again to achieve yeah. your thing. That's right. That's right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any, any question by anybody? Dr. Shakti Gupta, Professor Shakti Gupta, any comments? Professor Shakti Gupta, any comments? Sir, can I have a question? He's not there. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, yes, yes, Dr. Shakti, please go ahead. Yes, Dr. Shakti Gupta, please go ahead. Ask him to unmute. Uh, Dr. Shakti, you are not unmuted yourself. Hello. 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 Dr. Shakti, you are not audio. Yes, sir. Please go uh, ahead. Actually, uh, yes, he has touched actually a lot of things actually, but uh, because of the shortage of time, I think he could have actually spoken some other important aspects, uh, which are required actually when we talk about the hospital designs and uh, in the present, especially the COVID part actually. Uh, because in the, now the planning for the healthcare facility in the present COVID-19 scenario is uh, 
is the area which needs to be stressed more. I hope uh, Siddharth must have, have touched, at least I, I could not attend that actually presentation by Siddharth, but I believe you must have talked about that. The problem which we faced when we were converting OT, ICU and other areas uh, to be actually used for operation of the COVID positive, uh, positive patients. I'm not aware about that because I don't know how I was having a meeting in the ministry. So I couldn't attend that actually. Siddharth, uh, I hope you have touched that actually. I did a little bit, sir, uh, because the topic was a little different. It was it was actually about uh, you know changing roles, but I just briefly touched upon the you know COVID issues. Sir. Right. We can have a one full session on that because I had done a lot of work only very focused on that. That itself will take away a lot of time where we can work out a typical uh, approach for ICU operation theaters and also the ward independent room versus the general ward. There are plenty of things are there. And also we have worked on those areas where the plenum is above the false ceiling. The return duct is not there. What kind of a solution you have to do? How you treat the outside air and bring in a good air and again treat it and throw it out. So this is a one full session only on that. So whenever that is required, we will definitely able to help you. Uh, just to add further, actually, uh, just I want to share that uh, maybe in a week, uh, week time, actually, we are going to release our next book that is a planning and designing of specialty healthcare facilities. And uh, when we were finishing that book, so we actually thought about this thing, actually, and now we have included one special chapter on what are the planning and design consideration in the present COVID-19 environment. So that thing which, uh, which will address to that, actually, that we have added as a last chapter to that actually book. So this was, this is already active. We have discussed with the health minister. He is going to release our two books uh, in coming week or so whenever he is free. So I hope then everybody will be able to have access to that. Uh, Thank you, Professor Gupta. Yeah, one minute, uh, sir. Yes, sir. Go ahead, sir. Thank you, sir, uh, Dr. Sakti uh, I have already congratulated uh, you for the release of the book, and uh, I'm happy that the chapter for COVID uh, planning is already there. Uh, I will request Dr. Chandrasekhar or you know, uh, Dr. Sakti Gupta or Dr. Nikal, any one of them can, you know, uh, give us time for uh, in the coming weeks, you know, because we are in the process to have it every week. They can give us uh, uh, time and we can plan it because COVID planning, uh, planning for the COVID uh, in the hospitals is uh, uh, need as they are. So that can be done. Then uh, we have here uh, Ker Mahashwir, who is the chairman of the advisory committee on the academics. I will request him also to you know, suggest few topics. And we have uh, uh, our esteemed colleagues, uh, very senior colleagues here. I request them also to you know, suggest some topics uh, for you know, the coming weeks. So then we can include them and uh, some uh, good speakers can be invited uh, for this fruitful discussion every Sunday. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, Professor Chandrasekhar. Chandra I think um, to sum up, uh, we had some very you know crisp ideas, the younger generation regarding having a nursing cart. Very great idea, having smart uh, you know gadgets like smart PMR. Mr. We are uh, care back. And then, of course, you know, in, in uh, indoor air quality, we always talk about pressurization, dilution, and filtration. Now, uh, purification, a new a concept, I think, that can go a long way in uh, handling the infective disorder, especially in COVID era. And of course, uh, 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 portable isolation chambers, evidence based design for COVID and all. I think we can uh, organize as a, a, another talk some other day in coming week or so on these aspects. Uh, we can discuss uh, after this lecture and then we can you know, uh, bring a lecture on these grounds uh, in the coming weeks because we are in the middle of a pandemic. Thank you. Thank you. I extend my thanks to all the uh, you know uh, um, aha members and non members who have you know uh, logged in for this uh, elaborate presentation by uh, our expert uh, uh, dr professor r chandrasekhar and of course my congratulations to professor shakti gupta 
Lieutenant General Sunil Khan and um, uh, Architect Dr. R. Chandrasekhar for their upcoming book. And uh, we wish you all the great success with many, many more such writings from AHA and the AHA family. Thank you. Thank you all. We, we can unmute and chat informally if you want to, sir. The meeting Thank is over. Thank you we very much. Chat in, chat Thank in. you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, all. Dr. Bhalla, Thank you very much. How are you, sir? Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. General Biswas, good evening, sir. Support, sir. Good evening, sir. And, and a belated happy birthday to you, sir. Yes. 93rd happy birthday. Absolutely. I'm okay. Right, Thank you, sir. See you. Thanks. Good luck, sir. Good luck. Yes, sir. Okay.